Good Thursday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel. It talks about all my trucks and cars and motorcycles, my addictions, my dogs, my craziness. Yeah, the Ice Age TV. I've got an updated sticker if anybody wants a new sticker. Hey, uh, there. Thanks for tuning in my channel this morning. Appreciate all the nice comments and nice subscribers. I get some really nice subscribers. It's fun. I enjoy making my channel because it's just so nice to hear other people have a different perspective in life and share their ideas and in some ways probably have to hold their breath on really what they want to say. I get all that. So, hey, wow. What a nice day. What a gloomy day. Something that probably kind of fits the narrative of where the D.C. government is. It's a, or I should say the federal government. It's just gloomy. It's gloomy. And it's all about the money. That's all it's about. More than ever, it's all about the money. And if you watch my channel, you know it's all about the money. The amount of money I spend. The amount of money I don't have. Because I finance everything I buy. Yes. Everything I buy is financed. So, house is financed. Those cars down there are financed. Dogs aren't financed. Um, trailers, yes. Uh, the right trailer over the big one, I did finance that one so many years ago. But the other ones, actually, I just outright purchased those. But all these vehicles here, the Scat Pack, the F-150, the, the Mach-E back there, the F-450. The wife was aggravated yesterday, so she just parked in the grass because too many vehicles in front of the house yesterday. The Bronco Raptor, but these are huge these are huge payments. This is just, I mean, I'm, I'm a crazy man because these are all very expensive vehicles. These aren't $20,000, $30,000 vehicles. These are $50,000, $60,000, $70,000, $80,000, $90,000, $100,000 $100, vehicles you're looking at. So, yeah, so what's going on today? Today's topic is finance. I thought it'd be a good thing to follow up from the rate conversation yesterday and to give everybody an updated uh, information what's going on with me thinking about, hey, look at my hat, Harley Davidson. Look at my shirt. You would think in some ways that I worked at the Harley Davidson dealership. If you probably walked in the door of a Harley Davidson, you'd probably say, look at that guy there. That guy is the, uh, that's the Harley sales guy. So let's get the, the morning going here with a collection of vehicles. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about financing, which that's been the success and the ruins of my life. Is having to borrow money to buy things, which have I, have I made a mistake of borrowing way too much and overextending myself? Yeah, I've done that a few times. I've taken the hard knocks of life of losing things and going through hell for a while, but I've always have come back too. So that's the thing. So here, here is the two wheel motorcycle collection and I don't have any three wheel um, I never have owned a three-wheel um, motorcycle or whatever you want to call it. I just thought about that this morning. I've always have owned the two-wheel motorcycles, never the three-wheel. Isn't that something? Do I cross the bridge and change it up and get a three-wheel motorcycle? And here's my Indian head. Here's my new iPhone 15. I'm so busy. I haven't had time to screw with the damn thing. That's just a project in and of itself. So if you look here at my collection of motorcycles, I got to thinking to myself, I mean, this here is challenging, very challenging. This is a beautiful CVO Rogue Glide motorcycle, brand new. I spent some money in it. I've got receipts right now where I bought the Chrome Works exhaust. I have people watch that Chrome Works exhaust install, and a lot of people always reach out and like, where'd you get that? I'm like, from a Harley dealer to Chrome Works exhaust. You have to go to the Harley dealer to order it or whatever. I don't know. And so anyways... The exhaust, the uh, saddlebag protecting bars, protection bars, um, the new wind splitter windscreen that I bought for this, and the highway pegs. I haven't ever put them on, but there's two thousand. There's like twenty two hundred dollars worth of things I've already done to this bike. So if I trade this bike in, yeah, will they give me a little extra money for all that stuff? Yeah, a lot. No, so I'm gonna take a beating. I mean, the, the point is, if I do part of this bike. It's an, I'm going to take a beating on this brand new bike, even though they're offering me a pretty healthy number um, up at Chesapeake Carly Davidson. So that's a whole other conversation I'll tell you about. Here's a poor Indian Pursuit. Um, I think a bird even. No, it's just a little thing there. That needs to go to the dealer and have a freaking tire. 
Ah, it's projects, just too many damn projects. I'm just extremely busy, very busy time of year for me and my company. And so this morning, I got to thinking, what if I found a dealer that deals with, with somebody besides Harley Davidson Financial? This motorcycle here is financed through Synchrony uh, Motor, uh, this motorsports side or whatever you, power sports side, whatever you want to say. This Harley Davidson CBO isn't with Harley Davidson Financial. So this would be the better bike for me to give up because that's the old bike. And that's a new bike. So this morning I got to think of myself, that would be the better deal. But I got to find a dealer that just doesn't rely on Harley Davidson Financial. And I've done that. So, yeah, so, oh, my goodness gracious. And at the same time, eh, is it really even worth it, even though I just get fixated on something, and then until I get it, I just don't let it go. I mean, that's just who I am. So let's get up here in the office and uh, start the morning conversation on the finance talk, and I can give you a little bit more of a heads up of what's going on, being that, I bought that motorcycle back in August, and I was approved at ten, basically ten point eight nine percent finance. And even for me at that time, I was like, "Ooh, that's a little steep," but okay. I really want the bike, so I bought the bike. And let's get up here and see the puppies. Come on, pups, you ready to go to work? Yeah, it's a it's a really nice Friday per se. It's just a little bit overcast. Tomorrow's supposed to be a really nice day, actually. Sunny and pretty, and come on, pups. And it's a little warmer today. Now it's cold. Hey, my Kiefer German Shepherd dog just terrorized in my office. Yeah, figure let it look like it's being used, right? The guy that has the most perfect organized office, you don't want to work for that person. You do not want to work for that person. That person will drive you nuts. You want to work for the person that looks like he's in chaos half the time. It's more of a personal person, just so you know. Up there, and uh, get my cameras here fixed. So yeah, so yesterday I was talking about the rate. I was outraged that the dealer, Frederick Harley Davidson, I felt like was overcharging me for the rate. My, my seat has sunk. This seat is probably like 15 years old. It's still working, but ain't broke. Don't fix it. So I really was irritated at that 25.9% financing approval so i had my friend grace at chesapeake carly davidson she uh, did some research for me so yesterday morning she gives me a call and she says well they're not taking advantage of you that's the rate <laughs> i'm like really she's like yes that's the rate and i'm like what a joke i'm like what's going on she's like well your credit score when you bought the CBO Road Glide from us, you had like a 680 credit score. Your credit score now is 620. So my credit score, my, my credit score does jump up, you know, up and down a lot. So this is what's so crazy. So my credit score basically dropped by 60 points. And I'm now, you know, they, they have tiered levels of how they figure your rate, your exposure, your failure, all these different you know, variables play into how they come to closure, what they feel is fair and how they treat you versus somebody else. So the 25% is where I'm at. But it's just hard to believe that it went from 10 point, like 8, 9%. You're talking over double the interest rate just in the last borderline, not even 60 days. You're talking, we're not done with September. I mean, we are, but I mean, it's, it's just borderline. Not even 60 days, close to it. And my interest rate approval is now over double. Wow. But here's the thing. I just like, okay, forget that. You know, so I moved on. Well, later that this afternoon, I got to thinking, did she ever run the deal on that, um, the gold one? Jesus, the, man, it's on the tip of my tongue. Prospect, Prospect Gold. The Harley Davidson Prospect Gold Tri-Glide. So, I mean, I've never been fixated on three-wheel vehicles. So, actually, now I'm doing a little bit more research because people are reaching out. You should buy the Can-Am, the BRP, the Bombardier, the French company that makes the airlines and all our stuff. I know, you know, the basics of Bombardier, Bombardier, or whatever you want to call it. But a lot of people are saying get the Can-Am. 
get the spider, you know, get those, the front wheel, two wheel, rear wheel, one wheel. And yeah, I agree. I mean, those are very nice units. Those are going to be ride better, handle better, better pricing. I totally agree. But the challenge for me is I like the Harley. I just like the Harley Davidson product. Uh, I do kind of like the look of the Harley Davidson product. But yeah, I would say all day long that the Spider, the K and M, is by far the better choice. But yeah, am I that am I that smart? No. And I like the Harley Davidson. I just like the Harley Davidson stuff, and I have Harley Davidson other motorcycles. So you're at K and M. It's just a total separation from what I kind of have already. As a fit, if my kid's riding around with me, as my daughter and I ride in the, the Tri-Glide, then it kind of just fits together. For riding around with can am it's just a total two different worlds. So, and it's just kind of a different customer base as well, to a degree. Not totally, but somewhat. So anyway, so I called back Grace. And I said, hey, run the deal on the Prospect Gold. A brand new bike, you should be able to get a better deal. And don't you have any friends? Don't you get you a call? And I said, hey, let me ask you a question. How is business? And she's like, terrible. Terrible. She's like, it's it's bad. Okay, wow. This is a, a dealership that sells a good hundred motorcycles a month. They're not even touching that. They'll probably be lucky to sell 50. I mean, so it's not good. So, so here, so anyways, so sure enough, she calls me back like a few hours later and says, okay, I got you a done deal. On that prospect gold, and I guess you at twenty three percent. She knocked it down two percent. Well, Frederick Harley, she she tells me that the dealers in Maryland can put a two percent jump to get the kickback to help the deal and money wise. So I think it's the same deal. So I'm like, if you can't, I'm like, what about fourteen? Maybe fourteen, fifteen? Even that's like, ah, who wants to do that? She's like, no. She's like, nope. She's just like, I'd set it out. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. So that that was, was confirmed yesterday. So Frederick Harley, if anyone's watched my video, that's a Frederick Harley person or whatever. Um, they're not intentionally, like, abusing the situation. Okay? So so now I'm just like, eh, is it really even worth it? So now I just kind of kicked that to the curb. Well, meanwhile, I'm just always constantly thinking of things and doing things. And so... So yesterday, late yesterday evening, I got back here in my office and I was working. I said, you know, I wonder what other dealers have as far as just the uh, the trikes, the three-wheelers. And so, sure enough, a local dealer here has a really nice 120th, 120th anniversary tri-glide. And that's the whole thing. So I'm just learning the, the names. So RG3, that's the Road Glide 3. It's the freewheeler, basically, which is the less expensive tri-glide because it doesn't have the rear um, top trunk for it and the rear passenger seat and the rear in the lowers and the big front fairing only the rg3 has that but whole point is they have three harley davis has three different models and if you go start looking at these models the freewheeler is a pretty cool looking motor unit and then the Road Glide 3, it's a really cool looking unit. And the color themes they have, the wheel packages. I mean, now I'm like, these are really cool. Maybe I ought to just get that. Just get a three-wheeler and get away from the two-wheeler. I'm like, eh. You know, I think that the three-wheeler is going to beat you up more. I just, I just know that. I'm a four-wheeler guy. I just know having a solid rear axle uh, on your took. Your, your tuchus is sitting on a solid rear axle. And you're in the imperfections of back roads. You're going to get beat up. I already know that. So... I said, probably need a little bit more of a workout. Probably, in some ways, a good thing, I guess. But it's more accommodating if you're challenged or fearful of constantly holding up your 1,000-pound, 900-pound motorcycle. I mean, it is challenging. I have this gravel driveway here, my my driveway here. And getting in and out of my driveway in this these 1,000-pound bikes, you really have to you really have to finagle that. Until you ride in gravel, and especially heavy gravel, a uh, thousand pound motorcycle touring bike, you you just don't get it. I mean, that's that is a lot of people won't do it. I mean, I've been down many back roads of gravel roads. You can even see some of my videos being in Tennessee where we've gone and gotten off the, the wrong road. And we're driving down a gravel dirt road. I've even done it here in the Virginia area. It's not comforting. It's because you, know, you lay that bike down the gravel, you know, how much more 
hard that's going to be to pick it up, number one, because of loose gravel. Then number two, have the confidence to ride on and do it again. So, anyways, so the, 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 the three-wheeler lineup for Harley, they've done a good job. I mean, they really do have some really cool options. The new 120th Anniversary Edition, that's like a burgundy a color. It's a beautiful bike. I like that a lot, and they have one here locally, and I called them last night. Get this. Patriot Harley-Davidson of Fairfax, Fairfax, Virginia. These guys had their dealership home until 9 o'clock last night, having like a party there. They were giving away a bike. They had a live band there. So these Harley dealers are trying to do everything they can to draw in people to these dealerships because the changes are here. The change of times have happened. Finance. And that's why I named my video this morning, Finance. The finance is starting to really take shape and starting to change the automotive and motorcycle industry. I'm sure the RV industry, I'm sure the boat industry, the housing industry has already been happening, but it's really starting to happen. Just really here in the last 60 to 90 days that I'm now starting to hear stories from these individuals that the uh, it's getting challenging to sell things because people like me are applying for credit and then the, the interest rate that they're being charged is just so ridiculous, they walk away. And or one of my uh, sales guys that works here for a local Dodge dealer, um, he he claims what, what they're seeing. So here's the thing. The Fed rate is now like at 5.46 or something. So the 9%, 10%, that's what I talked about yesterday, new car finance, that's real. But it's, but it's more like people are seeing 12 and 14%. People are seeing 20 and 21%. You know, like what I'm talking about. So the, my good friend sales guy here at Worcester Dodge dealership, he says that, yeah, have the lights turned off in so many ways? Uh, yes. He claims they have tons of Hellcats, new and used, and people aren't buying them. Why? Well, there's a lot of variables. I'm sure a lot of people would say, well, you live in a very heavy government-based area where the government may shut down and people aren't guaranteed their guaranteed income. Yeah, I'm sure that in this area, in some aspects, that's going on. But at the same time, I don't think most people are excited about signing off in 20 25% interest loans. They, can, they plan on keeping these things forever and paying for them. But here's what's interesting. My sales guy said that he uh, has seen people Go cash out of her 401ks. <laughs> wow. So think about this. You got a 401k, and now you're going to go use it to buy a car. Okay. But this is the word in the street. People are depleting their savings at the fastest rate in modern times that we've witnessed because of, the, it's because of what's going on with the amount of money you're charged at the rate, it's very expensive now to borrow money. So people are using whatever they can to still satisfy their desires and getting creative and justifying, well, if I buy that $70,000 vehicle and I can use my 401k money, well, the vehicle has money. The vehicle has, have, but, but there's penalties for drawing 401k out if you're not careful. And then you sell the car down the road, I guess, and it's worth 40 and you put the 40 grand back in your 401k. I mean, how smart was that? So, I mean, wow. But yesterday, just talking to Chesapeake Carly Davidson, just talking to my friend that works for this uh, Dallas Dodge in Leesburg, Virginia, I'm hearing the same message. People aren't buying things. So the finance is starting to really take shape in our country. And, and now they're saying the August retail sector is showing signs that people are, are slowing down. The gas prices are keeping the inflation index up, but other things have kind of tamed down to a degree. But you think, how long is that going to last? Of all these trucking companies and manufacturing companies are now buying $100 a barrel oil um, fossil fuel-based products to make things and transport things, you know as well as I do, that just means that your food costs are going to go up again. That just means that anything transportation-related is going to go up again. Everything's going to go up again because we're getting this high price of uh, the fossil fuels. And so so back to the, the tri-glide. So for me, it's now, okay, is it really worth 
going to the triangle line. And that's what I said this morning. I called Patriot Harley yesterday. And what's incredible is tons of new people. That's what I'm witnessing a lot of these motorcycle dealerships. I'm not only really been hanging out in the car dealerships as much. I've been more in the motorcycle dealerships. But what I'm seeing is the influx of new people and the outflux of old people. So the change of staff is happening um, more in my eyes than it has in the most recent times. People are moving on because they can't make any money. In fact, my good friend from the Dodge dealership, he has a friend that worked at the Patriot Harley. He wanted me to deal with him. And I told him, I said, I guarantee he's not there anymore. He's like, he's still there. I'm like, no, he isn't. I guarantee it. He's not there anymore. Sure enough, he texted the guy last night when I was talking to him. And he informs me he's gone. He's moved on to greener pastures, supposedly. Yeah, whatever. What's greener pastures the, today? So anyways, yeah, the, 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 for me, the finance side, very expensive. Uh, it really makes no sense. Anybody that's watched my channel, it makes no sense at this time to go out and buy a three-wheeler because the rate amount of money I'm going to spend to buy something. But then the next question is, how long is it going to last? Is the high interest rates going to last the next six months, year, two years? I mean, what's, I mean, right now, the Fed has, has even mentioned, and even on the street they talked about, that the Fed could maybe hit a seven points. I mean, phew, even for me saying that, I'm like, no way. There's no way. The Fed raises the rate another point and a half. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's total. In my eyes, it's over beyond over. If the rate goes, I mean, you're talking now 11, 12%, um, you know, 10 to 11, 12% financing on homes. You're going back to the, to the basically the 80s and 90s type of financing. And then you're talking about cars. People are at 12, 14, 15% all day long in new cars and 25 and 30% unused. I mean, oh, and then, I'm, and I'm, and then I'm not such great credit scores. Wow. I mean, you just have to say to yourself, if this really continues to play out. But the thing is, people aren't stopping buying things. That's what the, the Fed sees is this habit. It just isn't slowing down as fast as they want. So, I mean, but I don't know. I think I think the, the opening your eyes wider is going to start to prevail more than ever. Because you're just hearing so many stories of things that are slowing down. And so many retail stores are showing lack of um, sales. So, yeah. So, back to the Harley-Davidson Tri-Glide, the RG3, or the Freewheeler. Freewheeler, cool. That would definitely just be a solo. RG3, RG3. That used to be a quarterback for Washington Redskins. Uh, what was it? Robert Griffin the third. It was the flash in the pan here the, with Dan with Dan Shanahan or whatever that guy's name was. Not Dan Snyder, but what was Shanahan's name? It came from the Denver Broncos that was run out of time, but run out of town by the time he got done coaching the Redskins and ruined RG 3s career by keeping him in a critical playoff game or game to try to go to the playoffs and just destroyed RG three. Yeah, so, R, so the RG3 is a Rogue Glide 3. It's a Rogue Glide with three alarm. But here's the other challenge that I just is in the back of my head. It's like the new technology on the new CVL. The 2024, I so strongly believe, will be that infotainment center, will be the inverted forks. It'll be the new style tank, the new style bags. Um, the second half of the 121 motor, I don't believe that'll, that'll happen. The new style handlebars, the Rogue Glide, really nice package. And, and so what if a year from now, Harley Davidson brings out the Tri Glide that's the updated, um, package. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, because that's really now the better package to have per se. And probably have the 117 motor in it. It'll probably be the, the standard motors, 117. That's kind of how they play. The 121 would be CVO. 117 would be more of the, the line of the higher-end touring bikes and probably the, the trikes. And so, like, wow. And that's where the, the debate is. You buy the – part of me is like, okay, buy the, the tri-glide now. And if I can keep it for two years and make my payments and make 
um, extra payments on it, then for the most part, I can probably trade it back in and get the newest, latest, greatest drag light. So part of me is like, yeah, that's the way to look at this because I don't think if they do the revamp on the new model line this coming uh, 2024, then does the Triglide and the RG3 and the uh, Freewheeler immediately follow that? Or is Harley kind of getting rid of all their extra parts and they use those just to finish out the run? And it's more like 2025 or late 2024, you know, 2025 when the trikes are updated to the new technology. I don't know. I'm not that in depth with that. So in that scenario, if I knew that, that would be 2025, I'd be more apt to say, okay, I'll roll the dice and get the trike now because I know I'll have about two years worth of ownership and I'll be able to trade out of it and get something else. That's just who I am. I don't keep this stuff forever. But like I showed you down the shop, trading my other CVO for the Triglide and getting a better rate with a bank like Synchrony or somebody else, that would be really the better way to go. So apparently Patriot Harley has access to other financial institutions. But the challenge for me is my credit score is very low. You know, in terms of the people buying these loans, underwriters, they look at my credit score, they look at my exposure. It's, you know, a lot of them just, eh. Harley Davidson Financial, they've known me so long. Yeah, they, they stick it to you. I mean, good Lord. I mean, wow. Right. Even for me, it's like, eh. I don't know. So here's the thing. At the Chesapeake Harley, the Prospect Gold Rush that I've kind of, I have mixed feelings. It's a good looking bike, but it's such a kind of a marked bike of who buys that. Yeah, right. Me. Yeah. But no test rides. You can't test ride it. And so I'm just like, yeah. So here at the Patriot Harley, should the weather hold out, not be raining, I can, I'm going to go down there this morning, later this morning, hopefully. Got to take care of business. And I'm going to ride the Triglide. I'd even like to ride the RG3. Just to kind of see that. The RG3, can you put a tour pack in the back of it and kind of customize it? Because that Triglide 3 looks so cool. But is it is it a different rear suspension? I don't know. I just don't know enough about that. Another person yesterday was saying, take your Rogue Glide CVO 2023 and make it a trike. Take it and have it customized. Okay, well, from my limited search, that's a $30,000 20. If anybody out there is watching my channel and knows it all, for ten grand, you can make your CVR road glide into a trike for ten grand. I'd be like, well, really? I mean, I can't see it. I can't see that that's possible. If that's factual, hey, reach out to me, give me your information, and let me know who I go to to get it done. But here's another thing. My good friend Chris, he said he has a hard time believing that brand new redesigned CVO just out of the gate anybody's even played with that. So you're going to be the guinea pig of that new design bike of having somebody um, modify it to a trike. So then I'm like, yeah, right. Who wants to be the guinea pig on that? I don't. And then instantly I lose all that value on the CVO roguelite I have because now it's a specialty vehicle. But it, it makes no sense to pay $43,000 for the CVO roguelite, put another thirty grand into it, you're, you're close to eighty grand. For you know, and will you ever get that for it? No. And here's what's interesting as well: the CVO that I rode trike from Frederick Harley that I really thought I'd probably end up buying. So I got the NADA, the National Automotive Dealers Association pricing. So they're they've been wanting like forty eight grand, forty seven grand, forty six grand, forty five grand. The real deal on that motorcycle is thirty eight, which I figured that that book, that bike in the market. Should really be about a thirty-eight, maybe forty thousand dollar vehicle. So, going back to Chesapeake Hurley, they structured a deal of giving me forty-one seven payoff, forty-one seven trade on my Seaver Road Glide, and then I'm paying the, the basically the thirty-nine nine ninety-nine, no setup, no freight for the Tri Glide. And their position is, hey, you know, we're giving you every bit of what we're going to sell it for. We'll be lucky to get forty two nine for it because we're selling the new ones for basically forty three, you know, forty three and change. But mine has all its upgrades on it, so I think that would help them a person come to closure to buy, give good money. But the eh, so do I go to Chesapeake Harley? I don't know. 
my position right now is I want to ride the regular Tri-Glide. I want to ride the 3G, um, the G, RG3, you know, Road Glide three-wheeler. I want to ride this and just kind of see what I'm feeling. And yeah, the K&M, I agree, the best package, better thing, but eh, I'm just not there. I'm just not there on wanting to go that direction with that brand and relationship. And I don't think I'd even get approved the financing personally. So the adventures this morning will be me going over and showing some video of me riding these other three wheelers. And yeah, do I part? I don't know. It's, it's a difficult decision and it doesn't necessarily have to happen right away. But the 120th anniversary is nice, but as Murphy's Law, the 120th anniversary edition I want, the color theme, it's another two grand more than the Prospect Gold. And then for this Patriot Harley, they're going to probably want to set up and freight this and that. So I think the numbers are going to get a little too crazy. But the new GM, new GM sales manager came from Boston, Massachusetts, starting last night. His goal is to sell six more motorcycles before the, the end of the month. And they apparently have 20 dealerships nationwide. So they're a big dealership infrastructure. They're all about the volume. So you never know. Oh my goodness, finance, right? The finance. What's you know, you know where are we going? And I mean, and, and once again, you step back, and you think the powers to be and what's going on in our country. I mean, it's just uh, and the UAW. Here's UAW now pounding their fist. They want to make more money, but are we getting ready to witness just the lights turn off in the automotive industry because of this high finance? So far, per se. It's not happening radically, but when you hear your friend that works at the Dulles Dodge wants now to be the finance guy, what does that tell you? Any car dealership business I've been around my whole life, when the guy that's selling tons of cars all of a sudden raises his hand and wants to be the finance guy, why? Because he's not selling tons of cars anymore. And he's, and he's so this is the, the owners of Dulles Dodge are patting their fists to sell cars. They're selling basically half the amount of cars they used to sell. Uh, as a salesperson, they're being chewed out on a regular basis in so many words that they're not doing their job right and they need to sell more cars. Uh, my guy claims they're supposed to make 100 cold call sales calls a day of calling people trying to get them in dealership to buy cars. And I'm like, yeah, like now you're the problem. All those profits that that dealership made during the heyday, they've stacked those, you know, they've already taken all those monies, they've enriched themselves. Are they going to take that money back out of their bank accounts? To make things work and continue, no, they're not going to do it. They're, they'll just start cutting, cutting corners, getting rid of people. The list goes on and on and on. Well, the real irony is they now have. They used to have like five to seven salespeople. Now they have fourteen because the theory of the owner is that the salespeople aren't spending enough time with the customers to sell cars. No, the customers realize how expensive these cars are, and when they're told they're going to pay twenty percent interest on a car loan. They walk out the door. That's the real story. They can't afford it. It doesn't even matter if they agree to the 20% interest. The payment is through the roof. I mean, where's that conversation? Just like with me, if I trade the Stevia Rogue Line for the trike, my payment goes up. So it's like, yeah, even digesting that, it's like, for why? For what? Very challenging. But here we are, you know, here we are now with, oh my gosh, we've had sitting powers to be. And the UAW is sitting here. Now they're at the 30%. If you're watching my channel, I said it's a no-brainer. Sean Fain's going to demand 50% increase in pay raise. When it's all said and done, if they get 25%, he'll be a winner. That's how you negotiate. You, still, you set the stupidest level of what people will just balk at. And then if the person, the, the, the big three, settle for 25% or 30%, they feel like they won. Well, deep down, Sean Fain was like, that was the goal from the get-go. But they're not getting anywhere. It's ongoing. Uh, at 10 a.m. this morning, Sean Fain's going to do his Facebook Live. And apparently, they're going to shutter more um, operations for the big three. I told my sales guy yesterday, the best thing that can ever happen right now for the audit industry is for the, for the UAW just to stop working and take the next three, four months off. And it'll be a heyday again for you guys in the car industry because all of a sudden, be so lucky to buy a car. And then the dealership will be like, oh, don't no more coming in. No more 2024. No more 2023 Dodge Challengers being built. It's over. It's over. The union now goes into December. 
The deadline for Dodge was the end of the year, so in so many ways, does Dodge revamp everything back up and build them in the next year? I guess, I guess it's possible, but you're being told by the sales guy, hey, see that Dodge Challenger over there? The Brambleton plant has been closed. Uh, the strike's been going on for three months. Nothing in the pipeline. You want it, you better get it. Otherwise, no. But here's the thing. They're so expensive and they're so high in finance, people can't afford them now. The giveaway car dealers, isn't that something how the giveaway car dealers, they're, 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 they're gone. You're just not, you know what I mean? It, it is a double-edged sword We're on this whole industry. And this whole automotive industry so drives this economy. More than people realize, it's huge. So, wow. All right, everybody, I'm going to leave it at that. So, yeah, the state of times, oh, my gosh. I can, you know, here's Elon Musk. Here's something that cracks me up. Elon Musk goes down to to the border crossing at what's it eagle's nest or something i, I don't even i don't know i don't know he's down there and it's i mean if you are an ex or twitter whatever you want to call it if you're watching social media alam Musk with tony gonzalez went down to the border and alam Musk did his own personal like interview with this congressman to show everybody what's going on the video was terrible terrible alam Musk is holding this the, his device this is a guy worth the richest guy in the world. And this guy, instead of bringing somebody with him to video he and this other guy talking, Elon Musk, I'm not embellishing. I'm going to just give you a little overview with my phone. This is Elon Musk doing his, his phone thing with this guy. He's talking to this guy, and he's looking at He's doing it. You get sick. You're getting sick. And, and his phone's, like, shaking and moving around. And that's like, I'm like... I can do a better video than that, Elon. Elon, terrible. It was pitiful. Go watch the video. You'll be like, the richest guy in the world didn't have a videographer with him to, to video this crisis at the border. And he's holding this piece of junk, whatever it is, in his hand, that the quality of the video is terrible. And then Elon Musk, it's like he takes forever to complete a sentence. And now other Congress members are calling out a lot for going there to show people the, the, the sad facts of how this country is being invaded by other, other people. I mean, we're, we're in a total invasion of this country. It's beyond believable of, of how these political powers to be just snub their nose at you. They're like, you're not going to do nothing to me. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do, and you can't touch me. And I can get away with whatever I want. I mean, it's beyond believable. Beyond believable. We are in, in total chaos right now. People are like, oh, it's radical. You're kidding yourself. You're not awake. Well, this country is in chaos. And sadly, I think that the, the radical stuff is right around the corner. I really do. And I think the election year is going to open it up because it will be the masters of deception, which I call the Democratic Party. Not saying that the Republicans are any better. But I'll tell you this much, the Democratic Party does a better job of deception of people, of making them believe things that just ain't true. Now, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here to promote that the Republican Party is the, is the answer of this country. I'm just telling you, the Democrats have a better ball game, and they're masters at it. And their next year, they're going to be masters of getting your focus off of what's going on in this country by creating, the, creating just what's probably you're going to witness in the streets you've never ever seen in your lifetime. And the thievery, and I mean, it's just, it's going to get dirty. It's going to get bad. And it's going to distract people from realizing that this administration has run this country into the ground. And you're going to be more worried about your well being and safety and concern than be worried about buying a new car or paying too much for groceries. Or not getting support. I mean, that, that's going to be your sideline. You're going to be more worried about your goodwill and those around you. Yeah, anyways, it gets deep, gets heavy. Lots of more things I can talk about. I've got to cut it off at that. Do I buy the Triglide? I don't know. You know me. Yeah, right. We'll see. I'll go evaluate. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's not. I get all that. Yeah, look at me with all these vehicles. Why do you have all these vehicles? Right. I get it. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching my channel. Hey, if you want an Ice Age TV sticker, need to bring some up here. I've been mailing them out. Uh, but an Ice Age TV sticker, just uh, email me, iceagecomments at gmail.com, and I'll mail you one. I've mailed a few out to support the channel. 
and keep it on the up and up, right? Let's try to keep it on the up and up. So thanks for watching. God bless. Stay safe and stay tuned for some three-wheel adventures. How about that idea? Have a great day.